one of the things that concerned people last month had to do with rainbow sidewalks. Now, the reason rainbow sidewalks are concerning is that an article came out with a couple of kids that left skid marks on said sidewalk, and now they risk up to 10 years in prison. So the question becomes, if rainbow sidewalks are so sacred and they have to be treated with the same level of respect as the American flag, then why would you put the rainbow symbol on the ground? At the end of the day, when it comes to the American flag, someone that actually cares about it wouldn't even let it touch the ground or get any specks of dust on it. So why would people that really love the rainbow flag be comfortable with it being placed on the sidewalk? And the answer to this is that it's very unlikely that this is a grassroots movement. Like, this is not people organically wanting the rainbow flag to be painted on the ground. And it's even more unlikely that most people would want kids that live skid marks on said ground to be arrested and face the possibility of 10 years in prison. So what exactly is happening? Well, if you go on Twitter and you tweet for at HRC, it's a Twitter account that is called the Human Rights Campaign. And by looking into it, you'll learn a lot of things about them. Uh, for instance, they're lobbying for something that's similar to the corporate environment, an ESG score. But they want this ESG score to be applied to municipalities. And they call it MEI, is the Municipal Equality Index. And they have a website for it. So as you can see here, uh, the inaugural edition of the MEI rated 137 cities and had 1100s and the overall average score was 59 points. So they're talking about how from 2012, all the way up until now, more and more cities are raising this score. Um, and this is uh, to help municipal leadership to continue to fight for their LGBTQ friends and their neighbors to be included and welcomed. As the MEI turns 10, it is proud to be supporting and amplifying these actions. And sometimes they're loud, like an impassioned city council meeting. Sometimes they're as quiet as a pronoun pin. And sometimes they're flashy like a rainbow-stripped crosswalk. So basically, a lot of these politicians that want to raise their MEI score, they have to do these performative acts, uh, which, as they describe them, like they seem quiet enough, right? It's like a pin or maybe a sidewalk. But it does have real-world consequences because when someone's kids go onto those sidewalks and live skid marks, the punishment seems to be quite severe. The document further reads and in fact even encourages people, that the flex points are offered for testing the limits of those state restrictions, while standard points reflect city leadership advocating against the state restrictions. So basically they view the current order of things, the, the current law and the way that the country was founded to be oppressive, to be authoritarian. So they reward politicians that go above the thing um, for instance, I, I would think if we were to apply it to something else, like another left leading thing would be like sanctuary cities, right? Like the law is very clear on the fact that if someone enters the nation without documentation outside of the proper checkpoints, then they have committed the crime and they have to be sent back because that's the law. And if people disagree with the law, they're free to change it. I mean, you're free to remove the borders between the United States and Mexico and, you know, like, seize American sovereignty to Mexico. It's like, if there's no border, then, you know, if the American tanks park themselves into Mexico, there's no crime committed because, hey, you know, there's no borders, there's no land, there's no differentiation of sovereignty, there's no, like, two countries over there. It's just like an economic zone where transactions happen, right? So this is how the left thinks, but that's not how the country was founded. So when you talk about things that test the limits of the state restrictions, I would definitely say that, uh, stuff like sanctuary cities is one of them. Uh, of course, it doesn't apply here because here is about uh, LGBT stuff. But it's like one example, right? So like with the LGBT stuff, it's like, okay, well, what if we paint the rainbow flag on the sidewalk and then anyone that leaves skid marks on it or disrespects it in any way, shape or form uh, gets to be threatened with the possibility of spending 10 years time in prison, right? Like this is how it works. And, and yeah, like this is a limit to state restrictions. Like even the Christians who, you know, they, they had various laws in the past against blasphemy and stuff, they wouldn't, like, paint a picture of Jesus on the ground 
and then saying it's okay to punish kids who are leaving skid marks or they're stepping on that particular picture. Like, if something is sacred, if something is worthy of value, the last place you want to put it is where people walk on, is where people trample it with their boots. Like, in fact, like, stepping on an important symbol is viewed as an act of disrespect by itself. But anyway, as you can see, looking more into this website, uh, they're also interested in law enforcement. So, like, they want activists to be placed in positions of power. They're also interested in the municipal services to place activists over there. This is what leftists called accessing. Basically, to have people of influence into every aspect of the leadership of an institution. So that when something that looks bizarre to normal people, right? Like here in Eastern Europe, we're reading the article with the kids living skid marks and we're like, what the hell? It's like, we don't have that here. Um... There, like, most of the people probably think the same, but because you have the activists in law enforcement, you have the activists in municipal services and in all the high places, they will gaslight the population. And they'll be like, no, 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 this is outrageous. Like, how dare they? And finally, of course, the grift comes in. Now, when you need to do a contract with a public entity, so, like, for instance, uh, let's say you want to build a bridge. What the public entity has to do is to make up an auction and then choose the company that's the best, right, based on certain criteria. Uh, for instance, they, they want to choose something that's not very pricey, but at the same time, something that's of quality. What this incentivizes them, however, is to choose companies uh, that have fair-minded businesses and taking steps to ensure an inclusive workplace, right? So like companies that have higher ESG scores, for example or companies that are doing more to promote the left-leading agenda, they should now be a criteria for why this company is chosen. So it has nothing to do with the quality of the product. It has nothing to do with the price for the work. It all has to do with the ideology, right? So like, is the company ideologically oriented enough in order to even be considered by the city? So uh, basically, if you have a city that is very quote-unquote woke, so yeah, if you were ever wondering, like, how on earth is this grassroots? Like, like how did people change so fast within the span of 10 years? Because, like, if you're looking at old videos that were from 10 years ago, like, nothing we see today existed back then. So, so you gotta ask the question, like, how did so many people change so fast? And the answer is they didn't. Like, this is not grassroots. It's artificial. It's being motivated by financial interests, and you have like all these people that are doing performative acts in order to seem like they're good, decent people, while in reality, it's 100% performative, part of it is a grift, and unfortunately, sometimes, you even have like kids that are now in danger with the law for living skid marks on the ground, like this is something that I don't, I don't think even happened in the history of America, it's like outside of this area, where if you leave skid marks on the ground on something, you would get punished because the, the the things that shouldn't have skid marks over them have never been placed on the ground. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like, I'm willing to change my mind if I see similar such examples. Uh, but until then, I'll see you guys in the comment sections and take care.